What about if you have a um, something that looks like this? You have a nitrogen in there. Um, let's see. I'll leave it like this first time. Okay. So that. Uh, uh, actually, let's do this, okay? Okay. Again. Uh, see if the atoms in the ring is sp2. sp2, 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 sp2. Well, this atom, again, we come up to this. We, some of you guys may get stumped, but don't get stumped. Again, we apply the same rule. This atom is sp2 hybridized. It's attached to an atom with lone pairs. So therefore it makes this also sp2 hybridized, okay? So that lone pair, we count in the pi, as pi electrons. So we'll have two, four, six. Six is equal to four n plus two pi. Um, four n is equal to six. Again, we know that from benzene ring, that example, that if you have six here, it's automatically aromatic. So we could plug in one, so four plus two is equal to six, so aromatic, okay? That's a lone pair right there. Okay, let's look at another example, a few more. Okay, I've been giving you constantly non-aromatic and aromatic example. Let's give you one like this. Okay, so what about this? This, uh, this cyclobutane butene okay that there's two double bonds is this aromatic or aromatic anti-aromatic or non-aromatic again identify the car uh, the carbons that sp2 or sp3 sp2 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 so there's two four four pi electrons right again um identify if it's sp2 or sp3 move on to this category count the electrons so two four set it equal to this formula right here and to this one right here so 4n plus 2 pi is equal to 4 and 4n plus uh, excuse me 4n is equal to 4 and then can you plug in a number so if we plug in 0 it will be 4 times 0 is 0 plus 2 well then that means that 2 is equal to 4 and that's not true if you plug in six, uh, if you excuse me, if you plug in one, now this formula would equal six. That's also wrong. Um, so we can't really plug in any number here that would give us four. So what about here? If we plug in one for n, it will be four times one. So it'll be four is equal to four. So this molecule here is this checks off this anti aromatic again uh, we couldn't plug any numbers for n so that the expression will be true so that this side will equal four however on, in this case we were able to plug in one and uh, we were able to set this side equal to this side again we can't plug in decimals negative values just plug in whole numbers zero one two three four five so on and so forth okay so this one's anti okay let's look at some more examples um, now this is going to get a little bit tricky. So there's the next few example or examples are going to get a little bit tricky, but you know stay with me, okay? And this is going to require a little bit more thinking. So let's just say we have okay nitrogen here from a double bond there, double bond there, double bond there, long pairs, okay? So what about in this case? Okay. Again, systematically, we're going to approach the problem, identify if everything is sp2 hybrid, hybridized in this, uh, in this molecule. sp2, 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 sp2. Okay. If you guys are a little bit hesitant, you can also look at this atom here. sp2 hybridized, hybridized. Wow, that's really hard for me to say that word. Hybridized, and it's attached to an atom with lone pairs. It's also sp2. Or it's a, uh, this atom is attached to one, two, and basically three other things. Okay, so everything is sp2 hybrid hybridized. Okay, so 
and we move on to this category over here. We completely forget about non-aromatic. Now we have to apply the rule, 4n plus 2 pi, 4n, okay? So, what are, what are some of your guys' guesses? How many pi electrons do you guys count? Some of you guys may say, well, there's 2, 4, 6, 8, okay? 8 electrons, right? And some of you guys may uh, say there's 6, but those are just guesses. I want you guys to understand why it's either 8 or 6, okay? The answer is 6, okay? It's not 8. And I'll tell you why, okay? And this requires a little bit, uh, this, this touches the surface of quantum mechanics, you know, orbitals and stuff like that, but I'll try to do my best to explain it, okay? So I say there's 6 electrons, 6 pi electrons. So why is that? Well, we know that this is sp2 hybridized right so if something is sp2 sp2 hybridized right that means that in order for it to be sp2 hybridized we needed one s orbital plus we needed two p orbitals okay okay we needed two p orbitals right this should be like some gen chem stuff, okay? So we mix these orbitals, orbitals, and we get from the conservation of, uh, of atomic orbitals, we get three new sp2 orbitals. So we get a sp2, um, sp2, and sp2. We get three of them, okay? So however many atomic orbitals you start off with, that's how many hybridized orbitals you're going to end up with. So you start off with three, you end up with three hybridized orbitals, okay? So that means that if we used up, okay, again, you guys should know this, that there are one, there's only one s orbital, there are three p orbitals. So if we used up two p orbitals, that means that we have one p orbital left, one empty p orbital. So we have one p orbital left, right? Let's put a little division between the two, okay? So, this is what we are left off with. Three sp2 hybridized orbitals and one p orbital. And we know that these formulas, okay, we know that we have completely gone away from this section. We're in this section here, and we're just now trying to determine if it's aromatic or anti-aromatic. Well, we know that these, this formula only applies to electrons in the p orbital, okay? So, it doesn't work with these with these uh, with these hybridized orbitals, it's only pi electrons. So pi electrons are in p orbitals, right? Uh, there's a little thing that my professor used to say: p's make pi's. Okay, so we're only dealing with p orbitals. Okay, these rules are based off of electrons in the p orbitals. Okay, so this part is easy. That's a double bond. Two p orbitals overlap to form a double bond, right? So I can just draw that in. I wish I had a different color, right? Two p orbitals overlap to form that, form that uh, double bond. Again, the same thing is true for here. Okay, something that looks like that kind of looks weird, but bear with me. Now, in this case, we have a lone pair and a double bond, and we know from our Gen Chem classes, our general chemistry classes, that in order to make a double bond, you need two p orbitals to overlap so if this nitrogen again this whole thing applies is referring to the nitrogen atom okay so if this nitrogen atom has only one p orbital one empty p orbital orbital left over okay it has only one left that one p orbital is used up to make this double bond okay so again if these formulas are based off of the electrons in p orbitals then that would mean that this would be included in the pi electron count that we set equal to these formulas so therefore that would mean that this lone pair is in an sp2 orbital and this bond here is sp2 is an sp2 and an sp2 overlap 
and this bond here is an sp2 and sp2 overlap okay this right here that double bond is used up this double bond is made by using up this empty p orbital this nitrogen atom had okay this nitrogen atom had has only one empty p orbital and that empty p orbital is used up to make this double bond okay the, in order to make the rest of these bonds like this one here and the other one here they use up sp2 hybridized orbitals okay so again this is really a really important concept okay um, in order to make this double bond this nitrogen needed a mtp orbital it used up that mtp orbital so we can just cross it out so this lone pair is not in an is not in a p orbital it's in an sp2 orbital and like i stated in order to count the total pi electrons we only count the electrons in p orbitals this is an sp2 orbital we don't count that it's not part of the pi electron count so in total you know it's a little bit long-winded this whole explanation but i think it's really important for you guys to understand it is that the total count is two four six so four n plus two pi is equal to um six right and 4n is equal to six and then like we all know already we plug in one for n and it's four times one plus two which is equal to six so six equals six this checks off this molecule here is aromatic okay it's not anti-aromatic it's aromatic okay so we will go over another example Okay, so you guys can understand it. I think I'll go over two more examples and I'll end the video.